Hi guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at something called animation events and they're extremely useful, extremely powerful, but I don't often see many people using them. Now it is quite a hidden feature if you don't know where to look for it, but it's an extremely easy way to trigger events during specific sections of an animation. And the example that we're going to use are iframes or invincibility frames. And you're probably most familiar with these, with games like Dark Souls, Enter the Gungeon, stuff like that. You can roll to avoid an attack, but during that roll, there's a set number of frames where the player is basically undamageable. And we could go about doing that in core routine, and we can just disable the collider and re-enable it after X amount of seconds. But the way that I'm going to show you gives you a lot more control over which frames you want to control. So let's just take a quick look at this little sample scene I've got set up here. So what have we got? We've got our little character, he's got some basic movement, and if I press the space key, he does a uh, sort of roll somersault. And we also have these spikes. And it's set up in such a way that if my player collides with it, I just disappear. The pack that I got this from didn't have a death animation, so I'm just doing destroy object. <laughs> but what I actually want is if the player was to do this little dodge roll, I want them to be able to roll through these spikes. But currently, if we roll, we just die. So let's look at doing this with animation events. But first, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. Go check him out on Twitter and on his website for the latest updates of his upcoming game. I've got his links down in the description below. And I also want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. So let's take a look at the scripts that I have. First of all, the spike script, just because it's relatively straightforward. I have an on-trigger enter. If the player enters that trigger, we call the kill method on the player. Speaking of the player, we have a reference to our animator and sprite renderer, which we grab and cache in our start method. We have basic horizontal movements. Pressing space will trigger the roll animation. We'll go into the animations in just a second. And we have the kill method, which just destroys our game object. If we take a look at the animator, for our player, we see we have a roll trigger and an X value for our horizontal movements. And it's a pretty basic setup. Our entry point goes to idle. We have a run animation and a roll animation that can go between each other. And then the run and the idle can go between each other as well. Pretty simple stuff. So how do we go about adding an event to a specific animation? Well, if we click our player, we can see in our animation window, We've already got our animation set up. We have an idle, a roll, and a run. And the one that we want to add an event to is our roll animation. So we'll click that, we'll bring that up right here, and we play it, we see this is the roll animation. And for this example, I want this full animation to make the player undamageable. And we're going to do this by events. So the first thing that we need are a couple of methods to actually call on specific frames of this animation. And the way that we're going to do this we're going to enable and disable the player's box collider. So I'm just going to put in a private box collider 2D. We'll call that call. And then we'll just cache that again in our start method. Just like that. And now right at the bottom, I'm going to create two more methods. And that's going to be public void Enable Invincible, and then I'm just going to copy that, and we'll call this one Disable Invincible. And all that these methods are going to do, they're going to set the collider, so call.enabled equal to false. Because if we want to enable invincibility, we disable the collider, we're no longer going to trigger that spike collision event. And then opposite... When we want to disable it, we'll re-enable the collider so we can start colliding with things again. Okay, so we have our two methods. If we pop back over into Unity, we select our roll animation from our animation window. And 
right about here, this little white block with a plus sign, if you hover over it, this will say add event. And what this is going to do, this is going to add the event at the frame that you've currently got selected. So if you don't want this to, for example, start on the very first frame, you want it to start on the second frame, you can just pull this playhead over to the frame that you want this to start at. But I am going to start at the very first frame. So we've got our playhead in place. I click on the add event button. And if I just move that player, you see we have this little square. Now it's blue because it's selected, but if I select something else, we see that it's just bright white. So if we just select this animation event, up here in our inspector, we have a function. And this is the function that we want to fire whenever this frame of this animation hits. And we see we have our enable and disable invincibility. So for the first frame, I want to enable that. And then we'll skip over to the very last frame of our animation, add another event, and this time we'll put in Disable. And it should be as simple as that. So every time we hit the roll animation, the first frame is going to trigger our Enable Invincible method. It's going to play through the animation like it normally would, and the second it hits our final frame, it's going to trigger the Disable Invincible method. And without doing anything else, we should be able to test this because we've already got our animator set up and we can already roll. Just ignore this uh, edge of the map that I haven't bothered making yet. And if we were to run at these spikes, we can press space and you can see a trigger is actually disappearing when we roll. If we were to run into these, we still die, but we can just as easily roll over them and avoid damage altogether. Apart from when you roll too soon. <laughs> and you can use animation events for pretty much anything really that uh, involve frame perfect accuracy. And there's not really much more I can say on the matter, the fact that you can see this working and I hope you can see how useful these are. And I hope you're going to be using them in your own games very soon. So, cheers for tuning in guys, I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bite-sized Unity hints and tips.